Hello, welcome to Baltic World. My name is Crispin. At the height of the pandemic, there was a running joke that the people of the Baltic couldn't wait for the six foot restrictions to be lifted so that people could go back to social distancing at least 10 feet apart. The joke meaning, of course, that the people of the Baltic keep to themselves. They're not particularly sociable, extrovert or outgoing. It takes a long time to get to know people. And if you look at other YouTube videos out there, about how to get along in Estonia or Latvia or Lithuania, there's this sort of warning that people are quite reserved. It takes a while to break the ice with people. You really need to put yourself out there in order to make friends. And then it takes quite a while for people to warm up and trust you. But once they do, you will have good friends for life. And while that last part is certainly true, the earlier tropes and stereotypes seem to be rapidly changing. Now to show this, a new UN study on happiness has just been released, showing the Baltic countries blasting through the international ranks to be some of the happiest places in the world. So thank you Gintaris for first drawing this to my attention. I have read the full report, it's extremely wordy. At first I thought this was a bit of a gimmick because as Australian, we're always in the happy indexes, but it's kind of a stereotype about Australia being laid back, being happy, not taking things too seriously. It's therefore not surprising that we're shown in happiness ratings and so forth. And so it comes up every year, but none of us really look into it too seriously beyond the headlines. Uh, however, it was interesting to see that despite most countries being fairly static in the ranks, the Baltic countries have shifted remarkably in recent times. So I'll read this article from the Baltic Times just to give a framing, but then I'll go into some more detail and we can discuss what's actually changing. UN study, Lithuania among 20 happiest countries in the world. Vilnius, Lithuania ranks 20th and is the happiest country among its neighbors, according to a new UN report published on Monday. Lithuania ranks 20th and is ahead of Poland, 39, Estonia 31 and Latvia 41, according to the World Happiness Report. Ukraine ranks 92nd and Russia 70th. Published by the UN Sustainable Development Solutions Network since 2012, the index ranks over 150 countries in terms of how happy their citizens are. Data for this year's World Happiness Index was collected between 2020 and 2022. The ranking is based on a variety of factors, including GDP per capita, social support, healthy life expectancy, freedom, generosity, and corruption. The report notes that Lithuania has risen steadily in the rankings over the last six years. The country ranked 52nd in 2017, with Finland occupying the top spot as it has for the past six years. We will leave the article there. So first, as you can see there, Lithuania has broken the top 20 countries, the first Baltic country to ever do so, but another story buried in the text is that of all the countries in the entire survey, Estonia has shot through the ranks the most, going, moving up 30 places. And uh, Latvia has moved up more than 10. Now, this is extremely rare. Most countries in the world will go up or down one or two places. But absent some catastrophic unforeseen event, most countries stay relatively stable within their pecking order. However, so significant has been the Baltic state's change in rankings that the United Nations has done a deep dive analysis as to the reasons why for the Baltic itself. Now, in order to understand this, you need to go into the very dense report, something that the various news articles have clearly failed to do. But I'll read some key quotes from the report here. It says, changes in rankings that have taken place have been continuous of longer term trends, such as the increases seen in the rankings of the three Baltic countries. Even during the difficult years, positive emotions have remained twice as prevalent as negative ones, and feelings of positive social support twice as strong as those of loneliness. And then if you go into the appendices, it says as follows, this can be seen as part of a general Baltic phenomenon. The increase in Estonia's rank was even larger than Lithuania's, from 66th in 2017 to 31st in 2023. Latvia's increase was also significant, but smaller, from 54th in 2017 to 41st in 2023. These increases reflect the general increases in life evaluations in Central and Eastern European countries 
shown in figure 2.3 with the Baltic countries converging faster than the average towards Western European levels. In other words, the global ranking for happiness is based in very important specific metrics and it's all done on a relative basis. Therefore, if one country goes up, another country must necessarily go down, meaning that the Baltic countries are performing exceptionally relative to some other countries around the world. And I'll explain the different breakdown in the happiness levels and why it points specifically to changes in culture and society. Now, according to this UN report, happiness is devised by balancing six primary factors, including GDP per capita, social support, healthy life expectancy, freedom to make life choices, perceptions of corruption, and the dystopia and residual environment of social support. That is how friendly people are to one another, how close people have in terms of their community, their families, the social connections that they enjoy. Now, in so many areas, the Baltic countries are way below average. Certainly perceptions of corruption. People in the Baltic countries don't look at their own governments favorably. I think that that's a bit harsh, actually. Uh, but that is what's shown in these reports. The freedom to make life choices and healthy life expectancy, below average for Europe, but not below average on a global level. And of course, GDP per capita is not as high as some other countries. However, what seems to be increasing year on year, so much so that it's overcoming these other ranking drawbacks and, and pushing far ahead of a number of other countries, including countries that are ahead of them, is the social ties and social relationships and the feeling of positive well-being that these Baltic countries enjoy. Now, I might be wading a bit into the data, but what I would say is that since independence and the collapse of the Soviet Union, the Baltic countries have really found their stride. They have shown tremendous confidence when it comes to rebuilding and reinvigorating their economies and spreading their wings on the world stage and within the European Union. They've taken the lead globally when it comes to supporting Ukraine and standing up to Russia. They have, as I've said many times, become the true inheritors of Western liberal values and traditions. They genuinely stand up for freedom in a way that I think there's a crisis of confidence in much of Western Europe and the United States due to the domestic cultural wars that are plaguing all of these societies, whereas these more homogenous Eastern European countries that have, again, restored this independence and understand the value of freedom, democracy, enlightenment ideas, they have come together in a more cohesive social way in order to work together and deal with common challenges. But the surprising change is one of culture. More and more people are saying that they're finding it easier to make friends, that they can increase the trust they have of one another in their interactions in the general public. So that can be business, that can be social. There's also something quite liberating about all this. The sense of legitimate grievance that the Baltic countries had from all the traumas that they experienced during the 20th century, the Soviet occupation, the horrors of the Second World War, well, they're moving beyond that with confidence and boldness in their own future. The people of the Baltic are standing up with a high degree of pride about what it means to be part of their own societies. The celebration of their national festivals, their language, their cultural and social identity, the uniqueness as Baltic peoples. The main reason that this channel exists is to provide a foreigner's perspective on what I think is a deeply underrated part of the world and something that the Baltic peoples themselves sometimes have needed encouragement to say, look, you know, there are so many things about the Baltic countries that are absolutely amazing. They are everything that people want in Europe and don't get when they travel to Europe. You know, people have this idea when they go to Europe on their European trip to have culture and history and music and architecture and food and they're just overrun and smelly and foreign. You know, they go to Vienna or Paris or London, and none of these places hold a candle, in my opinion, to the Baltic, which still retains its natural wonder and cultural tradition with a promise of a very positive lifestyle. Now, of course, the people in the Baltic continue to experience severe hardship and challenges. We talk about this a lot on the channel with inflation, the cost of living pressures, the problems, of course, living next to Russia, the challenges of demography, and the, of course, the ongoing conflict in Ukraine. 
But overall, the grand story of the Baltic is of coming of age. You boldly go into the 21st century with confidence, the head held high, the meaning of what it means to be Estonian, Latvian, and Lithuanian being something relevant and important and unique. The degree of familiarity that the people of the Baltic have with the people in their communities, their clubs, their next door neighbors, that's all increasing. The family ties are deepening. They're not fraying in the way that people once feared, particularly with the high degree of emigration that happened with the young people for many years. However, now what we're seeing is increasing reports of positivity and that the feelings of positivity are increasing year on year. Now, again, this is not to say there aren't real problems, real challenges, and on an individual level, these results are not evenly distributed. There are biases in the data towards certain areas, certain age groups, certain communities, so it's not shared evenly across the board. But overall, the people of the Baltic are becoming friendlier, more confident, more social, more extroverted, and more happy and proud to celebrate their national identity on the world stage. Something I think is absolutely amazing. I'll leave a link uh, to the Baltic Times report that I just quoted from and also the study itself. If you have some time, go check out the study because the Baltic countries, again, are the only ones, the only ones that are traveling in a rapid direction upwards. There are some that have gone down the rankings because of traumas over the past few years, but very few have gone way up the rankings and consistently year on year over multiple years as the Baltic have done and continue to do with Lithuania breaking the top 20 for the first time of any Baltic country and Estonia jumping 30 points over five years. That's extraordinary. Not to mention Latvia, which continues to show strength as well. So all of these countries are converging on the Scandinavian countries, which have consistently ranked the highest on the happiness index. So now I'll turn it over to you guys. Do you agree with the UN assessment that life and community in the Baltic continues to improve overall despite the many challenges? Or do you think that the UN is a bit rose-tinted in its assessment and that things are more pessimistic than it would suggest? I would love to hear your comments down below. Uh, again, check out the report if you have time. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Goodbye.